One of the toughest and yet most fun things to do in Satisfactory is figure out what you want to build next. Sometimes the path is clear, like when you unlock coal power and you're tired of picking up sticks and bushes. And sometimes you have a ton of choices like me in the later game. The game does guide you a bit towards certain choices you go along, but you almost always at least have the choice between more production or more power. So when I think about what I want to do next, I ask myself the following 10 questions. So question number one, what is your longer term goal? So right now mine is finishing phase four of the space elevator. Maybe you're just starting out and want to make 50 smart planning. Maybe you're a wild man and want to max out thermal propulsion rockets. Whatever it is, it's good to have some goal in mind while deciding what to do next. Question number two, what is the most logical next step towards that goal? So for me, I have three of the four phase four space elevator parts left. I have the first one, assembly director systems going at a slow rate, but fast enough to get finished well before I finish the next three parts. I also know that I'll need turbo motors for future space elevator parts and Mark III miners, so maybe that's next? I might want to use some alternate recipes for that, and I can spend a couple of tickets to get the turbo motors I need for Mark III miners right now, so maybe that isn't the best choice. So I need 4,000 magnetic field generators, the next space elevator part, so I should probably get going on them, or I might be waiting around for them to finish when I want to send the last package up the space elevator. I already have the versatile framework part of that and I have a ton of batteries so maybe I should move on to electromagnetic control rods. Yep I think that's the choice. So last week I went through this whole decision process and then I realized I might not have enough power hence why I just dropped that 10 gigawatt power plant. This is the time where you need to consider whether your next step is a new factory or more power. So question number three how much of that thing do you need to help you reach that goal? So as I said, I need magnetic field generators. I already have the five versatile framework per minute automated. So if I don't wanna make more versatile framework, and I really don't, that is enough for two magnetic field generators per minute. That calls for 10 batteries per minute, which is totally fine. I already make 120 batteries per minute and I can spare a few, so no problem. This also calls for two electromagnetic control rods per minute, not an onerous requirement by any means. Question number four, do you need that chosen product for something else down the line? And if so, how much of it do you need? So in this case, yes, we definitely do. I want to do nuclear power pretty soon and both plutonium and uranium fuel rods need electromagnetic control rods as part of the production chain. They're also used in some pretty good alternate recipes, electric motor and turbo electric motor that we might be using soon. And you even need 100 of them for each particle accelerator that you need to make plutonium. So that's a resounding yes, we definitely need more. This is the part where you have to start doing some math I recommend using the satisfactory wiki and working through what the requirements are for each thing and how much you need. So let's say we want two machines worth of the alternate motor recipes that I mentioned, electric motor and electric turbo motor. That would take about 18 electromagnetic control rods per minute for those recipes. Uranium fuel rods are another 15 electromagnetic control rods for each 300 uranium you process. So let's say 30 there. So using 600 uranium for nuclear power. And then depending on what recipe we use, we might need more for plutonium as well. So let's say we want another 10 electromagnetic control rods there. Put that all together to find kind of a minimum rate per minute that you would accept for your new factory. Putting all that together, we would want at least 60 electromagnetic control rods from our next factory. If you find yourself kind of nodding along with what I'm seeing, tell YouTube that this video is good by hitting the like button and then consider subscribing to my channel. Question number five, what recipes do you want to use? So we know we're making at least 60 electromagnetic control rods. There's two recipes for control rods, and we're gonna use the regular recipe because it uses less caterium, which is the rarest resource necessary for this recipe. And then there's some no-brainer alternate recipes that I always want to use. Solid steel ingot, copper alloy ingot, fused quick wire, and for the most part, iron wire as well. Mainly these alternate recipes are no-brainer for me because they substitute iron in for rarer ingredients or copper for carterium like infused quick wire. So we'll also use the steamed copper sheets recipe if we can find some water on the location that we choose to build our factory. Question number six, how much resources do we need? We know what we're gonna make, we know how much we're gonna make, and we know what recipes we're gonna use. So now it's math time. So if you're a beginner doing this, it isn't too hard. Often you can even do it in your head. But when you get later in the game like me, I'm sure everyone has a system. I occasionally break out Google Sheets to figure it all out, 
Some people even break out this thing called a pen and then write it by hand on a piece of a tree called paper. However, most days I turn to an online planner. Many people use satisfactory tools or satisfactory calculators, but my favorite one by far is Code Favors tool, which I'll show to you now. You can get a link to this tool in the description of the video. It has a great interface, especially when trying to compare alternate recipes and figure out the potential scale of your layout. Putting 60 electromagnetic control rods into the planner, we can see that we need caterium, copper, iron, coal, and water. So my constraint is going to be copper here with 400 copper a minute unless we find a place with multiple nodes. I never really consider iron as a constraint because you can almost always find a large supply nearby, really no matter where you are on the map. Question number seven, where do we want to build our factory? We know what we wanna make, how much and what resources it takes, so now we need to decide on where to build our factory. I always turn to the interactive map on satisfactorycalculator.com. Since it allows you to toggle resources by purity level, it makes it easy to find a range of possible locations to consider. For electromagnetic control rods, caterium is the rarest resource, so we'll start looking for those on the map. I'm already using most of the caterium on the western half of the map and the nodes in the northern forest, so we only have a few places to look for my factory. We can definitely look up in the dune desert. I know from previous playthroughs that there are a few pure nodes up there, but I think we'll save those pure nodes for when we really need a large quantity of quickwire. So now that we have Mark III miners, we can do all of this with overclocked miners on normal nodes. It just so happens that there's a normal caterium node with a ton of iron and a normal copper node right next to the blue hole where I just built my power plant. What a coincidence. Question number eight. Once you find your factory location, you want to adjust your production quantity based on available resources in that location. So I like to fully utilize nodes if I can and it makes sense in the context. As I said, my constraint for this factory is copper and I need 400 copper per minute for 60 electromagnetic control rods. But an overclocked Mark III miner on a normal copper node will give us 600 copper per minute. So I mean, come on, the math is even easy with nice round numbers. 50% more copper means 50% more electromagnetic control rods. So we're gonna use all that copper and make 90 electromagnetic control rods. So this should really set us up for the rest of the game with that much unless I decide to go absolutely nuts on nuclear power at some point. So one of the reasons to have a bunch of surplus power is that you can decide to do things like this and adjust as you go and not worry about tripping the breaker. Question number nine, what are your transport lengths? So this location is pretty good for this factory and really the only thing I'm going to have to do for the inputs is belt coal over from fairly close by and then for the output, I'm going to transport the control rods by drone to my central airport and then distribute them there. We're building our space elevator parts there so we can fulfill that requirement on location and then distribute them out to nuclear plants when we need them. Even though we're making 90 per minute, that rate is still low enough to easily transport by drone. And that just makes everything a little bit simpler. The only thing we have to do is make sure there's batteries for our drone on one end. And that's why we've developed our drone transportation system with a central repository of batteries at our main airport. Even so, I did build a train line to this factory so I can have a passenger train station, just the station that I can get to easily when I need to travel back and forth to bring supplies to the factory while I'm building. So question number 10, and maybe the most important one for some of you, is there enough room on that location to build there and make it look cool? You can fit in factories about anywhere if you build high enough or make super long platforms, but I want to make my factories fit in a bit with the landscape. You might want to actually answer this question earlier if it's a big concern for you like it is for me, but I put it at the end because it's really optional. Some people don't care about the aesthetic part of the game, and so it's really an optional question number 10, but it is important to most of us, so you might want to think about it earlier. These are the things that I think about when deciding what to do next in Satisfactory, but I'm sure that there are a lot of different thought processes out there. I can't can't wait to hear what you guys have to say in the comments because I know they're going to be some good ideas that I just didn't think of. I had a lot of fun thinking through this and I hope you had fun watching it. If you did, hit like and consider subscribing to see this electromagnetic control rod factory come together in its full glory. So until next time, I'm Dr. Loot Crate and stay stoked out there.